Hello and welcome back to another video. I've been really lazy with these end of year videos, I'm not going to lie, but I'm getting around to them slowly. Today we've got my top 10 horror games of the year. Enjoy. Actually, before we start, these are some games I didn't play, so don't be upset if they're not on the list, if you think they should be. I don't hate them, I just haven't played them yet. I don't really have a lot to say about the Outlast Trials to be completely honest. It was one of my most hyped games of 2023 and it delivered, but it still feels kind of underwhelming. I should point out that I haven't actually been able to play multiplayer because I don't have any friends that have the game. And the multiplayer is quite a big part of the game so maybe that's why. Playing it with someone else could have possibly pushed it up the list but I have to rank it on how I played it and I've only ever played it solo. It can be scary at times but I don't think it was ever going to reach the levels of the first two Outlast games since it's not really one big story. It's like a bunch of mini-stories that you're thrown in the middle of without much context. I'm sure there's a bigger story, I've just not been enticed enough to go figure it out. It's still quite a bit of fun though, and I imagine it's even more fun with friends. For me though, I'll just be waiting for Outlast 3. Miserable world. What freedom really means. Paranormal Sight is an anime style visual novel, not usually a subgenre of horror I tend to play, but the overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam persuaded me, and I ended up really enjoying it. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm going to be careful with what I say. Just go play it. Layers of Fear 2023 is basically the original Layers of Fear from 2016 and Layers of Fear 2 from 2019 packaged together and remade. One of the prettiest horror games of 2023 for sure. The story isn't exactly the same as the original games, it's part of the remake, so I wouldn't recommend this as a substitute for those games. Play the originals and then this one as well. If you can get through it, because I remember playing the original Layers of Fear back in 2017, I think it was, and it was the first horror game that ever made me sweat. Whilst this remake didn't quite capture that feeling, it's still one of the scariest games to come out last year. Lethal Company is by far my most played game out of any of these on the list, helped tremendously by the procedurally generated buildings that house some of the most fucked up monstrosities I've ever come across in a video game. Also it's not required but you almost have to have someone to play this with because the atmosphere created by using the walkie-talkies and the proximity chat is next level terror and comedy at the same time. Oh, it's gonna explode, man. It's gonna explode. <laughs> you came it down so fast. Drop it. You have to root there, you know. <laughs> Dredge is about travelling around on your little boat, upgrading it, selling your fishing catches and searching depths for long buried secrets. Sounds innocent enough, right? Dead Island 2 feels like more of the same, luckily the same is really fucking fun. With the addition of the new gore system, killing zombies has never been this fun. The story isn't incredible and the gameplay feels familiar, but like I said, the entertainment factor I think it's safe to say that Amnesia the Bunker and I didn't get off on the right photo release. Hello and welcome to Amnesia the Bunker, the new Amnesia game that I didn't know was coming out until like a week ago. <laughs> um, a quick brief history of my experience with the Amnesia games. I've
However, I've been able to play it since then, and this might be my favourite amnesia game. It's fucking horrifying. Make your way through a World War One bunker as an alien isolation-esque creature stalks you. This isn't your regular amnesia game, but fuck me, it's just as good. Arguably better. I enjoy Alan Wake 2 from start to finish. Its map is much larger and exploration friendly than the first one, especially given that this is a survival horror game, a subgenre that usually sticks to more linear map sizes. A positive of this though is the replay volume. The change of the inventory system being more akin to Resident Evil with limited space and resources was another welcome change. It does a good job of making you feel uneasy throughout. I'm not as passionate for this franchise as some, but I know a good horror game when I play one. Resident Evil 4 Remake continues the very good streak that Capcom have been on with Resident Evil Remakes. I don't think there's a single bad one. People would argue Resident Evil 3, but I love that one just as much as the others. Whilst Resident Evil 4 doesn't feel as scary as the other ones, you have to expect that because the original Resident Evil 4 was where the tone started to shift, and it's a remake after all. From horrific new creature designs and boss designs, to new welcome additions to segments and mechanics of the original game, auto sorting for example, this is how you do a remake, and I can't wait for them to remake my number one most nostalgic Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 5. This year was a really good year for horror, and I couldn't make a top 10 list without adding some honourable mentions. Parasocial by indie game dev, Chiller's Art was an exceptional new entry into their game library, and will be in yours as well if you enjoy retro VHS horror. You play as a game streamer who is being stalked by an obsessed fan. Sons of the Forest felt like more of the same. Of course there's a lot of new additions. The new caves in a way feel scarier, but I can't quite figure out why. The underground survival bunkers are very cool to scavenge when you come across them too, most of which have stories smeared all over the walls and hanging from nooses as well. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, while still being quite fun and entertaining, is just nowhere near as good as I was hoping it would be. But that's my own fault. Not every game can be Friday the 13th the game. Rest in peace, my love. This Space is not only my favourite horror game that came out last year, it's my favourite game period that came out last year. A fact that's not backed up very well by me, as it took me 11 fucking months to finish. But yeah, the Dead Space remake is perfect. It's terrifying, anxiety inducing, and gorgeous from top to bottom. It's incredibly faithful to the original game, so much in fact that I think this game makes the original better. This is an absolute labour of love from the dev team, with very good additions like side, side missions and a new game plus. I can't forget the sound design either. The eerie sounds of the ship are now more atmospheric than ever. If you love Dead Space or survival horror in general, do yourself a favour and play this game. Stop moving! Oh, That was fucking gross, but fucking sick. Its limb was like dangling off by a fucking muscle or nerve tendon or some shit. And that's my top 10 horror games of 2023. Hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.